Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to do a charcoal demonstration. Um, do bear in mind that I normally do this live in my sessions um, with people sat around. Um, it's the first time I've actually done this as a video, so hopefully it will be okay. Um, but it's the first time I've done it, so do bear with me. Um, Right, um, what we're going to cover is the various different types of charcoal that you can use. Um, so that includes vine or willow charcoal, compressed charcoal, different types of charcoal pencils, um, and I'm also going to go through the various different erasers that you can use with it as well. Um, and sometimes of charcoal, some types of charcoal are easier to erase than others. Um, I'm also going to discuss how you can combine it with graphite, um, where it's most useful, the sort of subjects that you can use it in, um, and go go from there. Um, the other thing I want to show you is charcoal powder. Um, we've done the demonstration on graphite powder. I think quite a few of you know how to use that. A um, little bit different, um, but it's still essentially putting it on in the same way that you do um, with graphite powder with a brush. So um, I'm going to reorganise um, the video camera so that it's going to show up me actually working on this surface. So you won't see my face, um, but hopefully you'll hear me explaining everything through one at a time and going through it all with you. OK, so I'll see you in a minute. Hello again. Right, I'm going to show you uh, vine uh, and or willow charcoal, um, which is basically made from sections of grapevine and willow branches respectively. Um, they've been burnt to a precise degree of hardness. Um, it doesn't have any binding agent in it, um, so it erases more completely and works well for sketching or out of composition or if you're going to just start doing something that you, you quite often people when they do life drawing they'll use um, willow charcoal so you can get it in different sizes uh, so you can get um, the thick one you can get a small one um, medium size you can also snap it so that you can get in more detail the other thing you can do um, is sharpen it on sandpaper. So if I get a bit of sandpaper and show you, I hope you can see that. It kind of gives you a bit of a point, which is a little bit easier and people find that a little bit easier to, um, to use. Also, I would suggest don't waste um, what's come off when you've been doing that on your sandpaper because that is obviously your charcoal powder. So I would keep that um, and then you can use that when you're wanting to use powder. So basically with the willow charcoal, um, you draw lines with it along like that. Now, you can use it straight you can use it on the side. Um, you can also blend it with your finger, which obviously takes the depth out of it. But if, say, for instance, you wanted to do something um, and you wanted to cover a large area quite quickly, um, Fine charcoal is probably the one to start with because it's so lovely and easy to blend with your finger. I will say at this point, obviously, as you have no doubt aware, charcoal is extremely messy to use. Um, and not everybody gets on with it for that reason, particularly if you're used to doing detailed work with your pencils, which is all very clean. Um, so don't be surprised, and if you have done this at home yourself, on your own, you've probably found it a little bit out of your comfort zone. Um, I do understand that. Um, I know exactly how that feels myself. Um, I tend to use it for certain things and not for others. It just depends on what I'm doing. As I say, if I've done life drawing, I tend to use it. If I'm going to do something from life, I'll use 
vine charcoal sometimes. Uh, the beauty of it is that you can make such wonderful marks with it quickly. Um, and I've just blown that myself just so that um, so that you can you don't have to worry about that like you do with graphite powder about getting um, any wet on it. And then if you use a thicker one, you can get a richer line and then blend that in. So it's quite nice, quite nice to use for certain things. So, and you can build it up. So you can just do, say your whole drawing, just sketching out just with one line, then you can work into it and build up tone, like I'm doing here. So you can get a little bit of graduation going with it. That's quite nice to do. So that's essentially vine charcoal. Compressed charcoal um, has got a binder in it. It's made of powdered charcoal held together with a binder of gum or wax. Um, and it can come in a, in a ratio of different uh, softnesses based on the ratio of powdered charcoal to binder. But it's usually harder than willow and vine. And you can always tell whether you've got a stick of vine or a stick of willow. Because if you drop it, that's vine. If you drop willow, you can hear the difference. That's because of the binder in it. So the good thing about... Um, the compressed charcoal is um, because of its hardness it will maintain its shape and it can be sharpened um, and you can actually get quite a lot of depth with it so I just move this along goes away. and I'll show you this is now using the compressed charcoal so if you can compare that to the vine As you can see, much, much darker. Also, it stays on the surface much more, which can be a good or a bad thing, depending on what you want. If you're wanting to cover a large area very, very dark like that, you can use the compressed charcoal and that'll do it. You can also use your finger on it and blend it. And it will stay put a bit more. So it gives you that lovely, rich, rich tone. <sighs> okay. Now, at this point, I'll also tell you that you can get compressed charcoal in um, different tones of grey. I mean, you can get charcoal in a number of different things. You can get sepia um, colours as well, I think. But... Um, this is quite a nice um, way of doing it because you can get different greys, different kind of tones. So, um, one that I use um, is this, uh, which is a black set of compressed charcoal by Jacquard. Um, uh, let me see if I can show you that on the top. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I got this from the range when obviously it was open. I'm not sure that it's open now, um, but you can get it online. Um, and the different tones of grey that I showed you, you can also get in this make as well. But um, you're probably going to need to go online to do that. 
So if you put in compressed charcoal, tones of grey, um, I think if you go on the SAA website, um, www.saa.co.uk, which is the Society for All Artists, or Jackson's Art Supplies, that's another one that's quite good. Um, basically have a search around. I know that one of my students got a set of these grey compressed charcoals uh, online. I can't remember where she got it from, but um, it, she, she managed to get it online, so you may be able to do that. Okay. Um, Right, I'm now going to show you um, using charcoal pencils. Um, you can get charcoal pencils in a number of different brands, um, but I'm going to show you, usually you can get them in a light, a medium and, and a dark, um, which basically means um, the amount, again, the amount of binder that they have in them. Um, they're made by putting compressed charcoal and, as I say, the gum or wax binder into a wooden jacket. Um, and it means that you can use it to get a little bit more detail. Okay, so I'm going to show you using the dark first. Now, obviously, this is going to be a lot more crumbly than your graphite because you're using charcoal. So you're going to get this crumbly residue coming off the end. Okay, so that's the dark. Um... And whatever make you get, you can usually get these in that sort of light, medium, dark. So it's a little, I'm using the same pressure. So a little bit lighter, not quite as dark. And then if I use the light, there's more binder in this. So it's a little bit less crumbly. A little bit lighter. There's not a huge amount of difference between them. If I show that up to you. So that's the dark, that's the medium and that's the light. Okay and if you compare that to that is the compressed charcoal and that is the vine charcoal. I'm going to go through these again uh, right on them and go through them at the end as a, as a kind of a recap so that um, you can make a note yourself. Okay, so um, other one I quite like is a uh, Conte Paris charcoal, which is a quite expensive one. Um, that's quite a nice one. Um, you can just you can get so many different brands, and as always, as we know, the more you pay for, the better you get. Um, that's quite nice, quite nice to use. Now, you can use uh, your finger to blend this, but not quite as much. You can also use um, blend which is a little bit easier than using your finger um, so if you were to, to give you some context if you were going to be drawing out a still life say you're going to be doing um, an onion or something like that you could use either use the vine charcoal to draw out, or you could use a pencil to draw out. Um, the only thing is, um, sometimes you find that um, the some are a little bit easier to erase than others. So in a bit, once I've shown you the basic different types of charcoal, I'm going to show you how you can erase them or not, and different types of erasers that you can use. Um, so we'll do that in a little, little section, another little section in a bit. Um, uh, also wanted to show you um, this is a white charcoal um, but it actually has no relation to traditional charcoal um, because in fact it contains normally titanium white pigment 
or calcium carbonate and a clay binder inside um, a wooden sheath. So um, white, white charcoal doesn't does legitimately exist, um, but um, this is the one that you would get. Um, so if you were going to be drawing on a piece of black paper, um, you could use a white charcoal. Um, you could go over the top of your charcoal that you've just used. But obviously, as you can see, if you do that, the charcoal that's already there will make it grey. So it might be, if you want it to be lighter, it might be easier to just use an eraser, which we'll do in a bit. But it's a different type of um, charcoal pencil that you can use. Okay. I also wanted to tell you about a Wolf Carbon pencil, which I think we've talked about a bit, um, but I haven't actually showed you. Now, Wolf Carbon uh, is um, a mixture of graphite and charcoal. You can get them in a set um, and you can usually get um, a B, 2B, 4B and a 6B. If you can only get one, I'd get the 2B, uh, which is the one I've got here. Now, the advantage of this is that the charcoal gives you a black, um, so you can actually get a nice black tone with it. But the graphite content in it gives you a little bit more control. So it's not quite as crumbly. So say, for instance, you wanted, you'd done a drawing and you wanted to, um, maybe you've got the edge of something, um, the edge of a flower, and you wanted to get a nice depth, dark background, you could use the compressed charcoal next to the edge, uh, sorry, not the compressed charcoal, the wolf carbon next to the edge, Shade it out a little bit. Then you could use um, your compressed charcoal over the top. And then use your finger to blend that out. Now, the advantage of using the Wolf Carbon first is that, as you can see, I've got quite a nice straight line. Now, with that, if I'd gone in just with the compressed charcoal, which I could have done, um, I wouldn't have got quite such a clean edge. Then I can come in with my finger and blend the compressed charcoal over the top. And you get a really, really lovely dark edge, dark um, area. So that's quite nice if you were wanting to do have a really black background around a drawing that you're doing. I'll show you some examples of that um, at the end where people have done that precisely that. OK. One thing I also want to say to you at this point is that you may be saying, can I, can I mix charcoal and graphite together? Obviously, if you can, um, but there's a way of doing it. If you're going to use, um, if you know at the beginning that you're going to combine the two, you've got to be aware that obviously if you're using charcoal, it's going to be black in your drawing. Um, and the other areas that are in graphite are not and they're going to have the shiny properties of graphite so that's going to look more slick and shiny whereas the, the charcoal will look matte so you do have to think about how the overall effect is going to look at the end also when you're using charcoal and graphite together if you're putting if you were to put a load of graphite 
on the surface. So say you've got, or you've decided, right, okay, I'm going to do a background and I'm going to do, say you're thinking, right, I'm going to do a load of um, graphite and then you change your mind and you're thinking, I might, I'd actually quite like that darker, I can't get that really dark enough to what I want. And you've put layers and layers and layers and layers over it. If you watch, if I then think, right, I'm going to put charcoal over the top of that, nothing happens. Can you see that? Just doesn't adhere. And that is the same if you use vine, if you use um, charcoal pencil, it doesn't stick because of the properties of graphite that are so slick and shiny. Um, the exception to that is if you're using powder, um, because if you use powder, it's a powder, so it's not going to be quite the same. So if, say, you'd use graphite powder first, you then could combine that with charcoal powder over the top. OK, so if you decided you wanted to combine, if you did think, right, OK, I can't do it that way round. And the way to remember it is C before G, charcoal before graphite. And that will make you remember. Um, but say you did want to combine the two uh, and you thought, I don't know, let's say we're going to do some wolf carbon first and then I'm going to graduate it out and I'm going to combine that with some graphite. You can use your graphite over the top like that. OK, now you can do that also with, um, if you did that with the compressed charcoal, you could do your compressed charcoal. <laughs> and then you could maybe not press as hard on the area where you've just used your charcoal so that you leave it darker on that corner. That's something you can try as well. Um, it's just different ways of using it and trying to get used to what you can do. Okay. Hi, I wanted to show you about, talk to you about um, sharpening these um, charcoal pencils because it's a little bit different to uh, what you do with your graphite pencils, obviously, because they're a lot more crumbly. Um, so, um, these are some I prepared earlier. Uh, this is a light. Um, charcoal which as you may remember does have actually more com more binder in it which means that it's um, harder and in holds together much more so I was able to sharpen that to a point with this ordinary cheapo pencil sharpener um, if you're going to sharpen the darker pencil um, charcoal which has got obviously more char charcoal content in it um, you may have more difficulties, it will just crumble away and you'll end up with about half a pencil. So what in those situations and also um, to some degree with um, the wolf carbon, particularly if you use a higher 6B wolf carbon, um, if you use um, a craft knife and carefully tease away the wood around the end, if you go too fast and you try and do it too quickly, you're going to chop off the end. OK, so carefully just wipe away. Then you can get a little bit of um, ordinary sandpaper. This is on a block. Um, and then you could rub it to a point. So you get a little bit more of a point with it. But um, 
you're never going to get a really, really pin sharp point and it will wear down a lot when you use it, obviously. So you're going to have to keep doing that. Um, so it's just a different way of using it. Um, the medium one you may is kind of between the two. This is the light. So um, that's actually quite nice. I managed to sharpen that to quite a nice point. So um, just have an experiment with it. Right, I'm going to now show you charcoal powder. Um, you can get this. This is um, a tub of it that I've got, which is Coates Artists Willow Charcoal Powder. Um, as opposed to graphite powder, if you compare this to your graphite powder, really, really black, as you'd expect. Um, same thing, I've decanted some into a little, the top of the, of the pot. Um, and you use a brush in the same way. And build it up like you do with graphite powder. Now, it's quicker to build up charcoal powder than it is graphite powder because it's charcoal, so it's darker. That said, you still need to do it fairly gradually. Um, and I would also still use your um, cotton wool pads just to sort of blend it in a little bit. Look, you can get darker quicker. So obviously that depends on what you're doing. I mean, you may, you, I think with graphite powder, sometimes it's quite nice to have that sort of gradual build ability to build it up very slowly but it might be do you might be doing something say you were doing some clouds um, which I'll now do out of my head so say, say you just wanted to do some stormy clouds or something you might want to put the charcoal on first or as we said before you can mix the two because it's charcoal so unless you've got masses and masses on there, you should be okay to mix them. Um, and that will build up quicker in a stormy part of the sky, for instance. So it's just, you know, a different thing, way of using the charcoal. But remember, you can also make your own charcoal powder. You don't have to get an expensive tin. And that would last me probably years. Um, you can just grate some vine charcoal with some sandpaper and there you've got your then you've got your charcoal that you need charcoal powder okay right just to recap um this is what we did earlier so this is the vine charcoal so again you can use that as i say i've put it down quite close um quite if definitely with lines and then I've used my finger on the left to blend it through so that's the vine charcoal um, this is the compressed charcoal a lot darker has binder in it so it gives you it covers a much more bigger area with a lot more depth um, and you can blend it in with your finger you can also use a stump if you want to and on the top right there of that little section there here uh, there's um, that's where I've used the grey compressed charcoal over the top well it's actually the white but it went grey okay this is the grey compressed charcoal this is dark pencil medium pencil and light pencil wolf carbon pencil wolf carbon on the edge and then we've got compressed charcoal over the top and I've blended it with the finger. OK, so that's if you wanted to do something on the edge of a flower to get a nice, precise white edge and then blend it. This is uh, C before G using charcoal before graphite. So this is my area of charcoal that I used. You can see how slick and shiny it is, I think. Um, 
and I have attempted to try and put some charcoal over the top but it hasn't stuck because of the properties of graphite. Over the top here I have used charcoal um, first and then I've used graphite over the top. So the one on the left is totally covered with graphite. The one on the right is where I have left a little bit of charcoal showing and then I've graduated with graphite afterwards. Okay. And then we have the charcoal powder here, which I put on with a brush. Now I'm going to show you some examples of what students have done. This is a drawing by Barry Kavanagh, which was um, we did in the class. We did uh, still life using charcoal. Uh, so he has used just a compressed charcoal because of the depth in it. He's used vine charcoal used the finger to blend it and he's also used a uh, eraser to take out areas. Um, then we've got above that, we've got another drawing by Barry, which is how, as I was mentioning, using it with um, um, to do clouds. So he has actually also combined that, I think, with compressed charcoal as well. Um, but there's a lot of charcoal powder on the top of that. He's also used graphite powder. Okay, this is a drawing by Annie, Annie McGrath. Now she's, you'll see that there's a slight sepia tone to this. Um, she actually used the Excel graphite blocks mixed in with it. She used graphite powder on the sky and then she used charcoal for the, for the sand. She used a little bit of powdered um, Excel block, burnt sienna I think it was, and put it on like graphite powder and then the huts in the foreground were done with charcoal, compressed charcoal, and pencil for the detail. Uh, and then this is one by Linda Hitchings, which is a lovely drawing of a flower, if you can see the detail in that, which she's done in pencil. In the centre she's used uh, wolf carbon pencil, around the edge of the flower she's used wolf carbon pencil, and then she's used compressed charcoal around the side. So that's a way that you can combine both your charcoal and your graphite if you wanted to. Okay, to show you some of mine. This is, uh, I think we've all seen this, this is my pansy. Um, so it's, yeah, my pansy. Um, I did this for my Nature's Patterns exhibition and in this particular instance, because I wanted to emphasise the pattern in the middle, I used charcoal pencil to do that um, and then the rest of it's all done with um, graphite. Okay, um, This is something that we do on the intermediate level foundation, which is doing a charcoal sea and a graphite powder sky. So in this sea, we've got a mixture of vine charcoal, compressed charcoal, there's eraser, there's battery eraser, there's um, all sorts of stuff. Um, I've used my finger to blend it through. I've used a stump, I've used a tortolan um, and built it up gradually. But as I say, that, that's another way of using charcoal, which we've, do, we've done at the second stage. So um, I've maybe just just to have a little play with it first, um, see how you get on. Another thing just to see, this is something I did a long, long time ago, which was when I was at college, and I did this from life. Um, it's the daughter of one of my um, fellow students, uh, and I did all that in charcoal pencil. Can't remember how long it took. She was sat um, sitting in front of me, and I did it from life. Um, because obviously that's a lot quicker to do that in charcoal. Okay, so have a play, try and do a swatch, try, try and do the same sort of thing I did um, and see how you get on and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, bye!